sometimes when we're simplifying radicals and we need to rationalize the denominator, we have an expression in the bottom that includes addition or subtraction, namely, we have a binomial down there. So for example, maybe we have 5 over 2 plus the square root of 7. When we have that, the only way to rationalize that is by using what we call the conjugate. If you recall, conjugates are binomials that have the same numbers, but the opposite operation. So here we have the square root of 5 and 2, square root of 5 and 2, but one is addition, one is subtraction. Those are called conjugates. And the special property of conjugates is that the middle terms fall out, namely the square roots. Let's begin by practicing how to write conjugates. Here we have 7 plus 5t. Conjugate, same numbers, change the operation. So it becomes 7 minus 5t. 3 plus 5x, same numbers, but change the operation. So the conjugate is 3 minus 5x. 4 minus the square root of 10, the conjugate has the same numbers, but the opposite operation. So 4 plus the square root of 10. Down here we have 15 minus the square root of 19. Again, conjugate means same numbers, opposite operation. So it's 15 plus the square root of 19. Now let's take a look at an example to see how we can use conjugates to rationalize the denominator of a fraction. Now, let me warn you right now, this can be very confusing. There's a lot of steps to this. So, relax, take it all in, we'll practice through them, and after a bit of practice, you'll begin to feel a lot better. Let's take a look at our first example. Focus right up here. We have 2 over 1 plus the square root of 3. Because we have a binomial in the denominator, we have to use the conjugate. And so since we have 1 plus the square root of 3, we're going to use 1 minus the square root of 3 over 1 minus the square root of 3. This is our special 1, just like when we rationalized the denominator before. Now, I'm going to multiply these. Here I have to distribute. 2 times 1 is 2. 2 times minus square root of 3 is minus 2 square roots of 3. Now that part is done. So I simply did the distributing and multiplied the numerators together. Now let's do the denominator. <clears throat> when I multiply this out, I get 1 minus the square root of 3 plus the square root of 3, and I expected that to happen. I expected the middle would fall out, minus the square root of 9, and 9 is a perfect square. Now, these are opposite, they cancel out, so I have 1 minus 3, which is negative 2. So I have 2 minus 2 square roots of 3 over negative 2. I've rationalized. My rationalizing is done. That's the new part right there, multiplying by 1 minus the square root of 3. Now, everything from here is old stuff. We're going to simplify the radical. And remember, when we have something that looks like this, we break it in half, and then reduce the pieces. So we have 2 over negative 2, and 2 square roots of 3 over negative 2. Well, this leaves me a negative 1, minus negative square root of 3, so plus the square root of 3. So <clears throat> this rationalized looks like this, and then simplified, like we did a few days ago, becomes negative 1 plus the square root of 3. I told you there were a lot of steps. Wasn't kidding, was I? Let's take a look at another example and just work our way through it, okay? Are you ready? Let's go. Example 6. We have 8 over 4 plus the square root of 8. Well, I have a binomial with addition or subtraction in the bottom, so I need to use the conjugate. I use the conjugate of the denominator. So 4 plus the square root of 8 I'm going to use 4 minus the square root of 8. And I'm going to do that to the top and to the bottom. Up here I'll use the distributive property. That's 32 minus 8 square roots of 8. Down here, 
4 times 4, 16, minus 4 square roots of 8, plus 4 square roots of 8, minus the square root of 64. <clears throat> Just as I hoped would happen, the middle things cancel out, and I'm left with a perfect square down there at the end. That's what I want. So now, the square root of 8 simplifies. That's 2 square roots of 2, so that's 16 square roots of 2. So I have 32 minus 16 square roots of 2 over 16 minus 8. So I simplified this up here. 2 square roots of 2 times the 8 is the 16. That's where I got the minus 16 square roots of 2 from. 32 minus 16 square roots of 2 over 8. Now my rationalizing is done. That's the new piece right there. From here, it's all old stuff. I break it apart and simplify each piece, if I can. 32 over 8 is 4. 16 over 8 is 2. So I'm left with 4 minus 2 square roots of 2. Again, just follow the steps. If you have a binomial in the denominator, you're going to use the conjugate. Now, I'd like for you to take a look at example 7. Give it your best shot. Please pause the video here and let's see how you do. When you finish, come back, we'll take a look at the answer. Let's take a look at the answer. I have a fraction with a square root in the denominator. It's a binomial, so I have to use the conjugate. 6 minus the square root of 5, the conjugate means the same numbers, but change the operation. So I have 6 plus the square root of 5 over 6 plus the square root of 5. Now, up top, I'll distribute. 6 times 5 is 30, plus 5 square roots of 5. On the bottom, I have to double distribute these binomials. That gives me 36 plus 6 square roots of 5, minus 6 square roots of 5, minus 25. And everything I wanted to happen has. My middle thing's canceled out, and I'm left with a perfect square. So, 36 minus 5 on the bottom, and 30 plus 5 square roots of 5 on the top. Now, let's clean it up. We have 30 plus 5 square roots of 5 in the numerator. 36 minus 5 is 31 in the denominator. The rationalizing is done. I now have a rational number in my denominator. That's exactly what I wanted to happen. Now, let's see if we can simplify. We break it in half. We have 30 over 31 plus 5 square roots of 5 over 31. Neither of these pieces simplify. So I could leave my final answer looking like this or looking like this. Now, let's take a look at the final example. The final example is exciting because what we have here is a fraction with a binomial in the numerator and a binomial in the denominator. Now, does it get much more exciting than that? No, it doesn't. Let's take a look. I need to get rid of this denominator. I don't like that it has a square root in it. So I'm going to use the conjugate. 4 minus the square root of 5. So I use 4 plus the square root of 5 and 4 plus the square root of 5. Notice in both places, I'm using the conjugate of the denominator. I don't care about the numerator. I only care about the conjugate of the denominator. <clears throat> now, I use my double distributing and multiply that out. I have 8 plus 2 square roots of 5 plus 4 square roots of 5 plus the square root of 25. Down here, 16 plus 4 square roots of 5 minus 4 square roots of 5 minus the square root of 25. And notice what happened in the denominator. Everything I was worried about has taken care of itself. These canceled out, and this is a perfect square. I can combine like terms. I have an 8 and a 5. That's 13. And I have 6 square roots of 5. Down bottom, I have 16 minus 5, which is 11. I finished rationalizing. Now, let's go ahead and see if we can simplify. Break it apart. Nothing reduces. So I can either leave it like this, or write it as a single fraction like that. So, here's what you need to know. 
if you have a fraction and in the denominator is a binomial, for example, 3 plus the square root of 5, we can't have that square root down there. Because it's a binomial, we've got to use the conjugate. We always use the conjugate of the denominator. We multiply the top, multiply the bottom by the same thing. Once you do that, and you go through the basic steps, then go ahead, go forward, and simplify your fraction following the rules that we learned previously.